Mario driver? How far is she going? Just as far as that'll take her. Thank you. Uh, would you like some water? No, I'm all right. <clears throat> Are you all going for? Just a two, son. A horse auction. My daughter is quite a horsewoman. Good night's rest, and you won't mind that 50 miles of desert tomorrow. I guarantee you'll get a good night's rest in this town. Mr. Barkley! Sure of yourself, Eve. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> well, I guess I'm still a little faster than you are, old partner. I told you we'd run across each other one day. I thought you were going to Virginia City. No, I got sidetracked. I'm glad of it. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, oh, You sure have. Hey, is that badge for real? Yeah, sure. I'm Marshall here. <laughs> Say, you got sidetracked yourself, I hear. Found yourself a family. The Barkley? Keith. Keith, if you ever do that to me again... Ah, Mother, I'm sorry. It's just an old game we play. Didn't mean to scare you. Tom? My mother and sister, Audra. Old friend Tom Wills. I do apologize to you ladies if our little game shocked you. No, no, it didn't really shock me. It just surprised me to see a marshal acting that way. <laughs> well, I can tell you, if anybody else tried the same thing, I'd arrest him right now. I hope so. I mean it. Say, how long are you going to be in St. John? Just overnight. Well, then you must do me the honor of being my guest at dinner. The chef at the inn sets a mighty fine table, especially when he's serving people of quality. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you. It's all set, then. Shall we say seven? Out into the luggage. That's a mighty fine family you got there, Heath. Yeah, they're really some. Thank you. Any time, Mel. Hold it right there. Now you just get back on that stage right now. What's the matter, Tom? 
I run a tight little town here, Heath. Took a lot of trouble on my part to clean it up. Now I aim to keep it that way. And there are certain kinds of females who are not welcome in St. John. Tom, we're just staying overnight, all of us. That's all right, isn't it? Oh, they mean trouble every time. Man should never make an exception to a rule. Not even for an old friend? Well, I reckon maybe old friends do have certain privileges. All right, just this once. But you stay close to your room, yeah? That kind of woman is trouble, boy. Pure trouble. Well, now, Tom, when did you become such an expert on women? <laughs> well, just never you mind. <laughs> hey, Heath, uh, leave that gun in your room, will you, in case you hadn't noticed. Nobody in town wears a gun. Except me. All right. See you then. <laughs> All right. Service, your luggage, ma'am. What's you? Uh, just put it over there, please. J for Jezebel. Well, they got it wrong. Shouldn't be S for Sally. Thank you. And and for what you did downstairs, I don't know how to. Well, I'm sure anybody else would have done the same thing. Would they? If you need anything, our rooms are just down the hall. Mr. Will's town, it ain't. Oh, I never seen no mirage like that before. I wonder where she come from. I heard we was getting a new school arm in one of these days. Yeah, if that's her, I just may go back and finish up my learning. Well, go on then. Let's see old Romeo in action. I got 25 cents here. It says you ain't even got nerve enough to say boo to that female. <laughs> something, miss? Yes, I'd like a dress. Well, I don't believe I stock anything you'd be interested in. No, no, I want something simple like this one. Well, help yourself, Lou. Licorice in the jar, there like usual. Uh, <clears throat> I come for chewing tobacco. Since when, I'd like to know? Since right now? I don't believe I have anything. Oh, you know. I'll take these two. They're perfect. And in my size, too. How much? Four dollars. I'll just put them in a sack. Uh, and I like a licorice. Well, just help yourself. It's right there in the jar. Four dollars and one cent for the licorice. Thank you. Two? Yes, 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you kindly, ma'am. Your name's Lou. Uh, short for Lewis, actually. Hey, hey, that's a nice name. Mine's Sally. I told you to stay in your room. I have a right to do what I want. No, you don't. That's the way it always starts. One of your kind comes in, starts parading her wares up and down. I was out shopping. Is there a room? <gasps> Mr. Wills, stop! Now go to your room. Mr. Wills, please. Ah! Stand up against the law, will you? <laughs> you wear it tonight. I was just coming to invite you to have dinner with us. Mm. I'm not hungry. Thank you. Well, you, you will be. Please, we'll be expecting you. We? My family. Well, I, I wouldn't want to disappoint the Barclays. Good. Uh, your, your brother's friend, Marshall Wills, he's a very dangerous man. <laughs> You know, I just don't believe it. Two old saddle tramps like you and me, and one is a town marshal, the other a gentleman rancher. No, just plain rancher, Tom. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, Mrs. Barkley, where is your lovely daughter? Oh, she'll be down in the moment. Oh, fine. Yes, sit down. Would you care for some sherry? Yes, please. You know, we have a quiet little town here, Mrs. Barkley, but having two lovely ladies like you as guests is going to give it something to remember for a long, long time. Well, that's very flattering. Thank you. <laughs> Aren't you going to join us, Tom? No, I have to set an example for the town people. Oh. Oh, that must be quite a burden. No, it's just caution. <laughs> I have to be sure that things don't slide back the way they were before I came here. Yes. Well, then, here's to virtue. <laughs> Sally, to join us, Mr. Wills. I hope you don't mind. No. 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 Isn't Sally's new dress pretty? Very pretty indeed. Sit down, Tom. Uh, look, I, um, I hope you'll, uh, excuse me. I, I just remembered I, something I have to do. Uh, meet me in my office later. We'll discuss old time. Waiter, you may serve now, please. Tom? Hey. Just heading over to your office. Well, how's dinner? As good as this end? That duck and wild rice never tasted better. <laughs> this little town will surprise you, Heath. Take a look around. What do you see? Well, a mighty peaceful town, Tom. Yeah. But a year ago, when the Citizens Committee hired me, the ranchers couldn't raise cattle as fast as they were stolen. Bank was closed. Bandits making withdrawals faster than customers could put in the money. That storekeeper right there lost two sons on this street one night, the hell races. I figured it had to be a challenge to get you to wear a badge. <laughs> well, I did something about it. I gave this town some rules to live by. Rules? My rules. Fred, will you get those bags in? Somebody's gonna trip over them in the dark. You know, I wondered what happened to you. Oh, I wandered around a while. Built a little reputation with my gun without really meaning to. And then one day I rode into St. John. Found a home? Pond. Big fish in a little pond here. That's the way I like it. Come here, I want to show you something. See that little house there? It's not bad diggings for your old trail partner, eh? Sure beats a blanket on the cold ground. Yeah, it's given to me by the townspeople. In appreciation. Very nice. Come on, I'll buy a drink. Uh, pretty quiet.
quiet in here, too, Tom. <laughs> More like a church. <laughs> Evening, Red. Mr. Wells. Whiskey. Yeah. It's not quite 8 o'clock, Mr. Wells. Oh, we've got a rule. No drinks sold before 8 o'clock. Man's places with his wife and children during the family hour. Red, you with the fact I have an old friend with me. I think it's close enough to 8 o'clock to let the folks have a drink. Okay. Bar's open, boys. <laughs> Join me? I forgot, you set the example. <laughs> yeah, there was two kinds of trouble in this town. One of them was too much liquor, the other was women. You know the kind I mean. They'd grab a working man's dollar before it hit the bottom of his pocket. Well, there doesn't seem to be any around now. That's because I stop them before they get a chance to hitch a skirt. <laughs> like that girl. I knew the kind she was the minute she got off that stage. That's real fast judgment, isn't it? It's experience, Chief. I've thrown a number of her kind out of this town. I know one when I see one. <laughs> What is it, boy? The doc wants to see you, Mr. Wood. About what? Lou Farrell. See how it is? Enjoy a drink, I'll be right back. What's the matter with him? Concussion. Trouble is, he isn't rallying. His heartbeats are regular, his pulse is... Why weak. are you telling me that? <laughs> just didn't want to be responsible in case... The responsibility is that boy as he stood up against the law. Well, somebody ought to notify his dad. You notify him. You see what happens? You make an exception. You let one of those females come into town for one night, one night, and a boy lies near death because of it. <laughs> Would you get out of my room? Get out! You hear me? Boy, he was tempting today. Lou Farrell, he's dying. Oh, no. That the perfume you were... Tempting him with? Get out of here! You know, maybe I was all wrong about you. Where do you say you come from? Red Rock. Red Rock. I know Red Rock pretty well. Where about you live there? Some, somewhere out of town. The edge of town. Oh, will you leave me alone, please? I work to do there. You don't have to answer. We both know, don't we? That uh, little lady you seen it have? A young boy smells the witch's perfume, and before you know it, he's lying in the street. His life blood oozing out of it. What did he want? Audra, I want to go home. Well, you are going home. He won't let me. He's never going to let me leave this town. I know it. I just know it. Shot. Tell him. <laughs> Afraid one of these days, though, he's gonna make me get rid of this pool table. Wills? Yeah, he doesn't care for pool much. 
Says it's the devil's game. Oh, I don't see how anybody can get in any trouble playing a little pool. Unless he cheats. <laughs> well, you know Mr. Wills. I thought I did. Should have seen this place before he got here. So much business you couldn't get through the front door. Then he started to make up his rules. No drinks served before 8 o'clock. Three drink limit to a customer. No drinks served after 11. Well, you heard him. Man should be with his wife and kids. What if he hasn't got a wife and kids? Well, if he's gonna live in this town, I guess he just better get some. Town I'll talk to you? Oh, thanks. Let's sit down. Now that stage leaves mighty early in the morning, Tom. Besides, I've uh, had my three drink limit. Times have changed, haven't they? They've changed. Meaning me, too. You've changed too, Tom. Oh, you're wrong, boy. I was always this way. Just never had the opportunity. Evening, Mr. Farrell. I just saw my boy. Well, oh, I understand the doc's doing all he can for him. You did all you could for him, too, didn't you, Marshal? You've got something to say. Spit it out so I can understand it. My boy's dying because of you. A man has a right to stand up for his own blood. You aim to do it with that shotgun, huh? Big talker, Mr. Farrow. Big talkers don't pull triggers, and they never find their backbone. Come on, Amos. Now get up. Come on. Come on. Here's your gun. You ought to know better, Amos, than to bring a gun into town. Now you get home before you get into real trouble. Come on. Go. Thanks for the drinks, Marshal. Your friend, Mr. Wills, paid Sally a social visit tonight. Oh, all right. Sally talked to a boy this afternoon while she was shopping. And the marshal beat him because he talked to me. So that's it. <sighs> Do you know how he is? Is he all right? Not good, I'm afraid. He's... he's just a boy. Just a nice boy. I guess it was my fault for talking to him, but... But his friends put him up to it, and I didn't want to let him down in front of them, and... And your friend objected to that. Heath, I want to see him. Do you know where he is? At the doctor's office. Please, would you take me to see him? I'll take you. We'll be back soon. He's still unconscious. How's his chances, Doc? No way of predicting. He's gonna die, isn't he? My boy. Mr. Farrell, why don't you go home? He's gonna die. Wife doesn't know yet, does she? Somebody ought to tell her, hadn't he? Yeah. Gotta tell her. Our boy's going to die. There's nothing I can do about it. And he don't know how right he is. Amen. Amen. 
Over here. Here. It's me, Amos. It's me, old man. You. Still got that shotgun, Amos. Why don't you use it, Amos? Huh? You'd like to kill me, wouldn't you, Amos? Yes! Yes, I'd like to kill you! Why don't you try? Try, Amy. Try. Farrell, no! Murder town. I told you to leave that gun in your room. Next time, do it. That old man didn't stand a chance. It's plain out murder. It was an execution. He's at a district marshal's office in Tucson. When we get there, tell him the story, all of it. It won't do any good. Well, you can't be sure of that. Anyhow, there's nothing else you can do. Mother, I came within a hair of drawing on Wills. That would have been a mistake. I don't know. No matter who won, it would have been a mistake. Just make the report to the district marshal. Sally, why don't you spend the night with Audra? Yes, please. You've done too much for me already. I'll be all right. I wish you would. I have a chain lock on my door, and this time I'll use it. Come on, Sally. I'll walk you to your room. Good night. Thank you. Good night. to be. I guess we all do. Will tomorrow really come? Yeah, it'll come. I hope so. I have made so many mistakes. You know, the, I left home to become an actress. Can you imagine that? That old, old story, and I believed every word of it. Now, you said you weren't going to remember anything before tonight. I know I did. Heath? Do you think there's a chance that I can forget? If you really want to. I want to more than anything in the world. Then you'll find your chance. I remember a story I heard when I was a kid about this girl who fell asleep on a hilltop and dreamed she was a beautiful butterfly. When she woke up, she couldn't remember if she was a girl who dreamed she was a butterfly or a butterfly who dreamed she was a girl. That's the way I've been. I didn't know who I was until now. Now, 
out, Miss Butterfly. If you'll lock your door, I'll wait outside until I hear that chain slide into place. Spending the rest of the night with Audrey. You get your things together. No argument. I don't understand. What happened? I just saw Wills down the street. He may take it into his head to pay you another little visit. What? What happens if he comes up here? Well, if he does, you won't be here. I don't think you'll bother our rooms. Frightened, I've been thinking, and I haven't been fair to you. I thought if you and I could have a little talk. Look, don't you understand? I'm just not interested. Sally, you can't go on like this. This is no life for you, being chased from one town after another. Now, this town is different. What I say goes here, do you understand? One word for me, and nothing would be too good for you. Come on now, please. Let me in. leave town alive. Not now. Come on, finish your packing. You're ready. That stage is about to pull out. I, uh, I talked to the doctor this morning, and he said that Lou Farrell was going to live, so I, I guess that means everything's going to be all right. So... Would you please get away from here? He is sitting in there in the other room. He might be out any moment. Please. He'll kill you. Is that why you came here? Is it? Please. Sally, Sally, listen to me. Tomorrow's do come, and yours is here right now, this minute. And your way home isn't through this house. 
But I'm not leaving without you. you win. something? He's a beauty, all right. And you didn't want to go to that auction. Did I say that? Well, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Keith, is that true? Maybe if you'd stayed home, none of that would have happened in St. John. Well, it wasn't anybody's fault, Audra. Why did Tom act like he hated Sally when all the time he really wanted her? I guess he just wanted to prove something to himself. That he was something different from what he really was. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sure does smell pretty. Mm. Well, mm. now, what's biting you? This is a package goes down the post office. Uh, has your name on it, too. And a uh, girl's writing. Mining? Mm. Who's it from? Uh, it's from Sally. Well, open it. It's got a letter in it. What does she say? Dear Heath, I am home at last. Really home. Father is suffering through my efforts at cooking, so it's only fair that you suffer through my first effort at knitting. When are you coming for a visit? Affectionately, Sally. Affectionately. Now, what is that? It's a, it's a muffler. And what are you going to do with it? I'm gonna wear it.
is skinny enough to sit on Porter, show Silver all the way around. I married her. She, she went plumb to sue it. I swear she could get fat biting her fingernails. Hey, Charlie. Look at there. Threw himself a dent in the back of his head. More than a while ago, from the looks of him. Wonder if his horse throwed him. Hey, Charlie. Same as the other one. Ain't likely they both got horse load. Looky, I'll tell you what. I'll stay here with him. And I want you to ride into Stockton and tell the sheriff the whole story. All right? Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. You sure you know what to tell him? Sure. What? Two more days. Old Nick ain't gonna quit the game till he's got all the money or none of it. Daze, you like ham sandwiches? Yeah, yeah, I like him. It's all yours. I'll see if I can pry him loose. Be good to me. Time to head for home, Nick. Home is where the heart is. Home is also where they expected us with some white faced cattle. Mm hmm. The valley's been without those pot belly shorthorns for over a million years. Another day or two shouldn't make any difference. Ha-ha! <laughs> Seven! And the money comes to smiling Nick Barkley. <laughs> Come on, Nick, shake loose. You're all fired trail eager because you're all cleaned out, that's all. Well, it was. Yeah, I am. Well, our foreman, Mr. Dace Edwards, is older than two times ten and a half, and his pants come clear down to his ankles. If he can't roll out those pot bellies by himself, then we're really in trouble. Well, we'll see you back at the range. No, no, no. You're gonna leave me out on that trail with no one to argue with but myself, and you know it. Stick around. Well, what for? This is for. Come on, now, a little Dace. Come on, 200 more. Let's see. Oh, 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 look at all that money. Trail expenses. You move them out, we'll catch up to you later, eh? Yeah, I'll see you in a couple of days. Uh, Dave, my uh, San Francisco tobacconist makes these up especially for me. 50 cents a piece. Smoke them real slow, will you? Yeah, thanks. Well, uh, I'll spend a night at Bleak House, Newman's Crossing. See you there, huh? Yeah, at Bleak House. Have a nice trip. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. How many of you is there? There's five of us. Well, 50 cents ahead includes a hot supper and a hot breakfast. Oh, well, Come on. Four of us are cows. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I swear, after the way your brother and I sleep, to get you all that schooling, you don't read nothing but something fairy tales. You're always thinking that you're a Cinderella princess. Anything wrong with dreaming? No. You just keep a good, tight grip on that dream. One of these days, it'll all come true. You get enough money and build that hotel up on the North Rise. A big, sparkling white one. A real showcase. And kings and emperors will come from halfway around the world to enjoy our hospitality. Why don't you fetch me a little taste of whiskey like a good girl? I have to wait. We've got a guest. Cowboy. Here, let me take your gear. You've been swallowing a lot of trail dust, have you? Well, I chewed enough sand to make my teeth get short. <laughs> well, sit down, sit down. 
I got something for you that'll make your teeth grow a foot and a half. Bill, pour the man a drink. Well, I always go first class. Now, you take it out of this 20. I'm uh, sorry it's the smallest I got, and take a dollar out for my accommodations. Yeah, well, I reckon we can find change for this around here somewhere. So where are you from, Mr. Um... Edwards, Dace Edwards. Originally from Cincinnati. Coming out west to make your fortune? Yeah, a little idea of mine. I got them uh, four heifer cows out there, and I'm going to start a new breed. Yeah, I saw you right in. Those are eastern-looking cattle, all right. Hundred dollars a head. You must have done pretty well back east to save up four hundred dollars. Oh, just a drop in the bucket. Here you go, cowboy. Thank you there. <laughs> Bill, you take good care of our friend. I've got some work to do out back. Okay, Pa. Oh, you care for a refill? Yeah, never did like to eat much on empty stomach. <laughs> Pardon me for saying this, ma'am, but I've been to one circus, two carnivals, and eight county fairs. And you're the prettiest girl I ever saw. Well, I bet you've said that before. No, oh, never once. So help me. Well, I'm just a simple country girl. You're liable to turn my head. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that. Oh, here, let me. It's got a man smell to it. <laughs> you know something? I never knew a man who was really comfortable with his boots on. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I've had them on for four days now. They're kind of stuck. They're kind of growed on like. <laughs> well, here, you just let me help you with them. Oh, well. You take your other foot and push. <laughs> well, ma'am, I... I just can't do this, no righteousness. I just can't. Just lean back and push. Ma'am. Well, I've known about this place before I'd have been here a long time. <laughs> I hit him a good one. He did. we get? Four hundred dollars worth of cattle, if he was telling the truth. Bart, you better drive him up the West Wash until we can find a buyer. I figured he was worth getting. Got the cows what we get. Eighteen dollars and eighty cents in cash. All he had on him was that twenty. Sure he did well back east. Four hundred dollars, a drop in the bucket, he said. We got eighteen dollars and eighty cents. Plus what we're going to get for his gear and cattle, now that ain't bad for a half hour's work. But he fooled us. Someday I'm going to meet a man with so much money, he doesn't have to lie. Now, you, when, when you roll, you got to talk to those dice. How do you expect them to do what you want them to do if you don't talk to them? We better rest these horses. They're not sweating. Well, I am. I never once heard you say, come on, dice. Make it, and I'll get you some new spots. Nick, them squares are made out of ivory. They can't hear a word you say. All right, and how come I'm a $3,100 winner? You cheat. Ah, uh, I play the winning streak. Play the winning streak. You can't win, you can't win. You can't lose, you can't lose. You look over there. Look, look, look over there. See that little rabbit? You see him? You see him? Yeah, I see him. Well, now, I'll bet you $10 when I holler, he's gonna spook to the right. Huh? Huh? No, no bet. See that? Now, when was the last time you saved $10 so easy? Well, it must have been 15 or 20 minutes ago, when I didn't take that bet on whether them stupid bird's nests had pink eggs or blue eggs. You want to camp here? I got some hooks. We'll see how lucky you are with these traps. Oh, no, 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 no. I can afford a hot meal. Oh, oh by the way, uh, where was that place old Dace was going to meet us yesterday? Bleak House, up at Newman's Crossing. Oh, now, why can't we stay there the night? We'll get up, have a fresh start. Well, we're only six hours from home, Nick. We'll be in there before midnight. Tell you what, we'll flip for it. As we go to Blake House, tells we go on home. Not huh? a chance. But I'll bet you the food is lousy. Fifty cents it isn't. Uh, no ah! Ah! <laughs> You'll never get that bed clean that way. You're going against the grain. You're gonna go with the grain this way. This way, eh? Uh, Looks like somebody got hurt here. Uh, no, we just slaughtered some hogs. Hogs? Ah, eh? well, how does a half a dozen pork chops sound to you? Sounds great to me. Oh, uh, well, we sold off all the pork. 
But we got beef stew for supper, and for breakfast we got bacon and beans, and sleepings in the loft, and the price, 50 cents each. Here's five. Well, uh, I, 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 I ain't got change for five dollars. Oh, that's all right. You take it. We just want the best in the house. You got it. Say, what time did our foreman leave this morning? Who? A fellow named Dace Edwards. He was driving some white-faced cows. He was supposed to stop here last night. Did he stop here? No, ain't been nobody around here for days. Uh, listen, I'm gonna go down to the house and uh, get my assistant to stop supper for you, all right? All right Glad all right. to have you. What do you suppose happened to Dace? Oh, I don't know. You get those fat cows moving, you wouldn't want to stop them now, would you? I guess not. All right, let's get the horses on the saddle and get to that hot meal, huh? And one of them's got a roll of hundred dollar bills you could stuff a tall goose with. And they was asking about that feller that was here yesterday? Yeah, I said he was their foreman. Huh, he was just a foreman. Well, you can't trust nobody nowadays. What'd you say? Well, I told him we never seen nobody fit that description. Oh, good. Uh, you figure they got fifteen hundred, maybe uh, two thousand dollars? Oh, more than twice that. Enough to get us a real fine hotel. Well, uh, you feel them out, and I'll be in the back room getting some shut eye with both ears open. Howdy. Come on in. Just make yourselves at home. Got the pot boiling. Pork's out of the whiskey. Bell, they're paid. Well, now. See what I told you? Some days you just can't lose. Howdy, ma'am. I'm Heath Barkley. I'm uh, Nick Barkley. Uh, oh, uh, uh, sit down. I'll, I'll fix you a drink. The best in the house, please. Are you the Stockton Barclays? Yes, ma'am. Hope you gentlemen are hungry. You like beef stew? You make it, I'll guarantee it. I, uh, I'll set the table. Let me help you. It's your move, Mr. Barclay. Nick. It's your move, Nick. That wasn't a very good move. <laughs> Make it hard for a fellow to concentrate. Do you get by here very much? No, no, no. Not ordinarily. This may prove to be my favorite route to Fresno. I hope so. It is late. You said you were going to leave before sunup. I don't need any sleep. Oh, I do. Next time. It might be sooner than you think. might be coming back. I hope so. Daddy, you let him get away. Those are Stockton Barclays, boy. Too rich, too many friends, too many folks expecting him back. But all that money. We tempted fate when we killed their foreman. Besides, that black-haired one, he, uh, he sparked a bell. They all do. 
We might build this into something permanent. Hold up, hold up. What's the matter? Well, I just, uh, just remembered I left that rifle of mine back at the bleak house in the barn. All right, I'll ride back with you. You'll need somebody to argue with. No, 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 you go on. The family, they may be worried. Of... Well, I'm sure Daisy's got back and uh, told them about that crap game. Besides, you might need some help. With that girl. You get out of here. Sure. I saw him with my own eyes. Jared, that's terrible. Well, the prodigal returns. I live and got me down. Now, what's so terrible? They found three more bodies in the North Jetty. Three more? That makes nine in the past two months. Any identification? Not unless you want to count their skulls being crushed in like all the others. We were beginning to worry about you. You were supposed to be here yesterday. Well, didn't Dace tell you we'd be late? Dace? We sent him ahead with the Hereford. Well, he isn't here. Well, they should have got here yesterday. Maybe you and Nick better double back, see if he's in any trouble. Well, Nick isn't with me. What do you mean? Well, he left his rifle at the place we stayed at last night and rode back to get him. Oh, well, then he'll be here in a few hours. Well, not exactly. Uh, you see, he left a girl there also. Oh? Not anything to worry about, though, because Nick's riding a winning streak. But if Dace doesn't show up in a couple hours, I'll ride back and check on him. Good. What's for lunch? so soon. Well, I forgot my rifle. It's been a man who sits a horse the way you do couldn't ride five feet without noticing an empty rifle boot. Well, as a matter of fact, I was just about all the way home and I remembered I'd stuck it under some hay in the corner of the barn here. <laughs> Many hands make light work. Here, I'll get that. Thank you. Uh -huh. Aren't you afraid you'll disappoint a lot of Beautiful, rich young ladies up in Stockton? Well, if there are many, that many beautiful young ladies up in Stockton, I wouldn't have to take my rifle out of the boot in the first place. Besides, none of them are as pretty as you. Oh, Mr. Barkley! Bart, Mr. Barkley's here! Look, why don't you come on over here and sit down and make yeah. yourself comfortable? Pa, well, I... pa, Mr. Barkley forgot his rifle. Why don't you That's get him right, some I... coffee? Hey, you're going to be staying the night, Mr. Barkley. Well, there's I... big doings in town tonight. Oh. There's a barn dance. Bill, you tell him about the barn dance. Uh, there's a barn dance. Oh. Well, I... Would you do me the honor of your company? You can wear your flowered dress. Have you had lunch? No, Bill, I... Bill, why don't you fix a picnic basket? It's kind of warm around here, and it's nice and cool in that grove down by the river. Ain't nothing do good for our starboard of Mr. Barkley. What'd Nick think of those herfers? Did he finally change his mind? It took some convincing. <laughs> well, they'll grow on him. Audra, what are you doing? If you put any more sugar in that tea, you're gonna have to chew it. Well, nine men have been murdered. Aren't you too worried? Yes, we are. I'll get it. Oh, Sheriff, come in, come in. Good afternoon, Victoria. You're just in time for coffee. Thanks, Victoria. But Hello, Hello everybody. Red. Red. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. We found another body. It was your foreman. Dace Edwards. Oh, no. Dace? Where? The river, North Jetty, same place as all the others. Heath, how much of a head start did he have on you? About 12 hours. We were supposed to catch up to him at Bleak House, but he never showed up there. How do you know that? Well, we checked there last night. They hadn't seen him. I'm gonna wire the lawmen upstream and form a posse. We'll ride with you, Sheriff. Let's go. Fine. What kind of a person would do a thing like that? Like it? Love it. I mean the picnic lunch. That, too. I was talking about your face. Are you trying to memorize me? Mm-hmm. From chin to hairline. I just... Well, I just can't get enough of looking at you, so... Why? Oh, I don't know. I think maybe I'm trying to find something wrong with you. Very difficult. But you found something? Mm-hmm. Blue, blue eyes. But a man could drown in those blue eyes. I never thought anyone would notice. 
Well, you have a defect, too. I do. Where? Your forehead. Your hair keeps falling down on it. Somebody. You are somebody to me, Belle. Somebody very special. Don't talk that way. And don't feel that way. Let's just let him know. amount of time. Bail? Bail? How did it go? It was just wonderful, Pa. You still got that money on him? Barry. Well, Daddy, she's got a funny look, too, I ain't never seen for. Well, it ain't the kind of look you'd ever like to understand. Well, would you mind waiting outside? I, I want to take a bath. Well, well, don't throw the water out when you're finished. Bart's going to use it. Daddy, do I have to? I'd appreciate it. like it's working out. Well, if Bill marries him, who's going to do for us? Oh, we can hire anybody we want. Uh-huh. She'll move in that big house and grow uppity ways and have us fetching and toting. Oh, no. We got a saddle on your sister, boy. Not if she marries money, we don't. Well, wouldn't the Barclays be flat out shocked to learn they got an in-law who's done the things that Bill's done? We are gonna be rich, Daddy. Like having a tunnel to the bank, son. Like having a tunnel to the bank. What was she like? Hmm? Oh. First girl you ever in love with? Oh, that one. She was a most unusual girl. Was she like me? No. Oh, very different from you. Very different. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A darker complexion, a little shorter, a little skinnier. But then again, so are all Piute Indian girls at the age of 11. <laughs> well, now you're making fun of me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pry. Oh, I just suddenly feel like I need to know everything about you. Do you have a middle name? Mm-hmm. Nicholas Jonathan Barkley, ma'am, at your service. What about you? Where are you from? Your father and brother sound like they're all oh, up around Missouri, Kansas way. In Missouri. Mm hmm. Where about Missouri? Oh, it's a place you never would have heard of. What's your army? Clay County. Clay County, Missouri. Seems I have heard something about that. Oh, no. <laughs> Just a little place, nothing ever happened there. Uh, well, I, I don't know about that. You were born there, weren't you? All right, enough about your past. Do you have any idea about your future? Hmm? Tell me. <laughs> Tonight, right after that barn dance, we'll wear all alone. Do you know what I'm going to do? No. Well, I'm going to buy us two steaks about an inch thick and two bottles of wine at the best restaurant in town. <laughs> <laughs> called off, and I spent eight dollars in advertising. Oh, why'd you have to cancel? Yeah, most of the men rode out of town on posse. Who are they looking for? Somebody around here has been killing folks and throwing them in the river. A bunch of bodies wound up in Joaquin County. You might as well go home. Eight. Ten people knocked in the head. Maybe more. We can still get home before dark. Ain't nobody actual said lynch you. But they sure been fingering their ropes. Take me home, Nick. Still stay and have a little dinner. Please. There are people around here doing things like that. 
I want to get back and warn Daddy and Bart. Well, all right. Come on. This is where we found the bodies, and this is where we'll split up. Check every house upstream, both sides of the river. Penn, Baines, take the loft in place. The old man and his wife are over 70, but check it out anyway. The Colvin, Herm, take the Stern's place, also look in on the Hubble. Next up would be Bleak House. Jared, now take that one. That covers 20 miles. By that time, we ought to be meeting up with the Lathrop Posse. All right, let's move out. Understanding, Nick. I'll take the buckboard to the barn and unharness. Oh. Oh. Wake up! Wake up and listen to me. Get up. Now listen to me. We gotta get away from here. There's a posse and they're talking lynch. Those bodies we threw in the river didn't stay underwater. They found a whole lot of them. How are they gonna trace them to us? When they can't trace them any further upstream than this, they're gonna start poking around here. There's nothing to tie up in. It's bound and arrow down to us, Bart. Now, do you want to take that chance? Yeah, hush, hush. Where is it, Barkley, fella? Out in the barn and harnessing. What's he going to think if he sees us riding out like this? A man hitting the head with a hammer don't think nothing. With that money of his, we can buy us a whole lot of distance. Nothing happens to him. Oh, Pa, don't you understand? But for a few hours, I had everything I ever dreamed of. Right here in my hands. And my hands were clean. And it wasn't all yesterday's. It was tomorrow's. Bell. Bell. Oh, Paul, why does everything we touch turn to mud? He was a nice young fella. If we move on, there's going to be other ones. Not like this one. So what are we supposed to do about him? He's a loss. We tap him on the head, and we send him downstream. No! Downstream. Stream. You got an idea. They found all the bodies downstream. What if they was to find one with its head bashed in upstream? Why, well, sure take the curse off on us. Well, where are we gonna find a body? In the barn. Unharnessing. And with a pocket full of money. I told you, Pa, no. No. Well, whatever's going between you and Nick Barkley's past work, and he fills our needs like nobody else can. And then we can stay here and build our big hotel. We ain't ever gonna have that big hotel. We won't ever have anything. Maybe, but it beats swinging from the end of a rope. You just move him into the right spot in front of the canvas, and we won't have to explain anything to anybody. We can stay here, we'll have a lot of money, and be just as pure as a morning dew. I won't do it. Listen to me. You ain't never disobeyed your daddy before, and you ain't gonna start now. You hear me? You got no choice. It's him or us. He's coming. You better listen to daddy. I've brung us this far, and I'm gonna take us all the way. You just tell him we rode out to join that posse. Let him in, Bell. Let him in. Everything all right? I'm fine. I've been left a note. Rode out with the posse. Well, see, I told you there was nothing to worry about. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I ruined our dinner, our whole evening, but, well, it's still early. I, I could fix you a cup of coffee and maybe a sandwich for cheating you out of your dinner, too. Here, let me help you. No, no, just sit down over here. I can do it. Oh. I realize how tired I am. Ah. Lean back there and relax.
sure. Uh, my foreman stopped by here. He said he was gonna. A foreman? Dace Edwards. Matter of fact, I gave him a couple of cigars before he left Fresno. Cigars made especially for me. Like this one. Oh, let me see. Oh, yes. It's got your name right there. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you must have left it here last night. No, no, no. I'm sure I smoked all of them before I got here. Oh, you must be very tired. Uh, why don't you let me help you off with your boots and I'll uh, show you some real Missouri hospitality. Missouri? Clay County? Yes, that does ring a bell. My brother defended a bank robber from up that way. Had a strange defense, though. He, uh, said he didn't even know he had committed a crime. The only crime that was known around his parts was working for a living. He taught the children how to rob and kill rather than read and write. And all the heroes the kids had were men like Jesse James and the Youngers. Take care of that. No! A shot might bring the posse. And they gotta find a body upstream with a mashed in head, right? Now let's get the cameras back up and take him up river. Get the posse? No, it's just as bad, though. Heath Barkley and some other man. Let's get him in the back. Bill, you get rid of them fellas. <laughs> Afternoon, Bell. This is my brother, Jerry. Looking for Nick. Uh, I suppose he's at back. Uh, no, he isn't here. He did come back at noon to get his rifle, and then he went right back to Fresno. Well, he's a forgetful one. Sorry to bother you. Pleasure, miss. I wonder why she lied. That was Nick's horse we saw in the pasture. I don't know. Let's ride out a ways and double back, huh? Right. No way I can help it. Oh, Pa, it's no use. We ain't gonna quit, Bell. I ain't never lost a fight yet. Gun beats hanging eight ways from Sunday. You got the guts for it, boy. I'm ready.
Nick. Are you all right? Uh, uh -oh. Where are they? Huh? Take it easy. Take it easy. Nick. Where's Belle? She's in the barn. I'll get her. I'll get her. She's all right. She said I'll get her. It's over. I wasn't going to let him hurt you, Nick. I wasn't going to let him go through with it. Just sit back, Nick, and relax. Lean back, Nick. Don't. Sorry, Bill. You did love me, didn't you? Well, no, I'm... I'm not sorry about that. It's everything else. You don't have to be. What do you mean? I didn't kill any of those people. I just talked to them. Paul and Bart is the ones that killed them. How many people, Bill? I don't know, 15, 16, I don't know. And you just stood there and let it go on, huh? They'll hang me, Nick. Unless you help me get away. Get away? Well, there's only two of them out there. Two between us and the rest of us. Those life. are my brothers. If those are your brothers out there, then they'd let us get away. There's got to be some place for us somewhere. I'm afraid you'll always be carrying some dead people in your hip pocket, Bill. I wasn't... I wasn't born 22 years ago. I was born this afternoon in a grove down by the river. And the doctor that delivered me said that a man could drown in my eyes. And then he kissed me. I never grew up around nothing but men folk who never turned a furrow. Never spent a drop of sweat. They never did nothing by the book. I haven't had to sneak away to go to school. They lived in nothing but old sod houses and caves. But someday we were going to have that big house. And then everything was going to be all right. 